Hey, what's up? It's me, LA, pronounced like LA, like the city. I'm not from there, but I'm breezy. Fourth grade, the last grade in Thomas White Elementary before I shifted over to middle school. Fourth grade was a, a hoot. Fourth grade was a doozy. By that time, I felt my mind was molded. And I was set at least until sixth grade. As far as my mindset, my brain felt hard. It felt firm. My, my thought processes did based on what I gathered. At least in fourth grade, thankfully, I had a teacher who was, I had a teacher who was nice. His name was Mr. Madison, and he was a really cool teacher, and I'm just so happy I had him and not the other teacher. So, whoo, thank you, Lord, for breathing on me, giving me a break. Um, fourth grade... We had individual desks th this time. Thank God, we didn't have to sit in groups. We had our individual little islands. I'm not sure if we had assigned seating. I think it became assigned seating after we picked out which desk we personally wanted. And then after that, the seats were cemented as to that's where we would sit. I'm thinking it went like that. I sat, there was the door, I came into the classroom and then to the left was the wall and window. I sat in the second row from the wall and the next to last row away from the teacher's desk. Yes, I was so happy. So that alone was a windfall for me. That alone was enough. Whatever came my way that year in fourth grade, I believe I was gonna be able to deal with simply because I had a good teacher. The classroom was decorated. The teacher cared. And I got to sit where I wanted to. That alone was relief. If I was making friends, I had given up that. But was still confused as to why everybody else had them and I didn't. And still confused as to why my parents, mainly my dad, because he was the authority figure in the house, why my dad wouldn't let anybody come over. And so maybe if I wasn't torn with the stipulation of my dad really not liking people to come over, Maybe I would have tried harder to make friends. So uh, there was a mental block there. Danged if I do, danged if I don't. You know, so putting myself out there on the line was would be kind of pointless if I even did let those kids in because my parents would be like, oh, they can't come over anyway, so. Another reason why I chose to be quiet on top of the fact that I did like to be um, by myself anyways. Excuse me, I have to drink some water, but I do believe that introverts can, I do believe that introverts can have a, um, achieve friendship. Fourth grade, unfortunately I learned that guys had preferences and what types of girls they would prefer or what they liked. And I don't know why in fourth grade I was introduced to colorism. Because it's weird, because the same girls, to my knowledge, from second grade, who spoke to me every once in a while, you know, didn't come with me with this that that type of yang yang talk in second grade but when fourth grade came around there it was about me 
talking white or sounding white or acting white or being white when I actually did start to talk more with the white kids in the classroom. I can't say I probably did change my voice when I got around them. I'm not sure if it was simply to fit in, but I can honestly say I really liked how they sounded when they talked. I liked the tone of their voice. I liked the flow of the words when they came out. I liked that they said every word clearly. I liked that when they spoke, everything came out and I could fully understand what they were saying. I liked that even if maybe they were mad, their voices didn't get raised. But on the same note, I could feel there was a barrier there. I could feel that I was different. There's a difference between being different and going into a social area where you feel different. And it's the kind of feel different where it's icky and uninviting and sad and kind of rude and heartbreaking at the same time. It's not a different like when you're going from college, when you're going from high school to college. This is a different social difference. So I started dealing with those types of feelings too. You guys, elementary, I honestly don't remember learning anything from the textbook. I just remember social, social stuff. And got a lot of, got a lot of heartbreak and just opened up with Pandora's box of confusion and self-doubt and feeling unworthy and at the same time feeling worthy and being confused as to why people separated themselves like they did and why couldn't people, why couldn't we all just get along and how come my parents didn't prepare me for um, a social shock and I didn't know that there were, what really was a such thing as poverty and middle class and rich class and good clothes and <laughs> I don't remember learning anything in elementary from the textbook. I think they just passed me along because I was simply a nice person, honestly. Uh, but from personal experience, introverts do tend to live in their heads a lot <laughs> but from my point of view I didn't I don't recall learning too much of anything but social stuff like real life stuff so I do confess to talking white changing the tone of my voice when I got around them I wanted to fit in I wanted to be with them I really liked how they talked and to, to this day, I still do. They pronounce every word and they seem to know grammar really well. And I didn't understand that neither. I can't tell you my grammar struggle was real when we got into learning whatever vowels and pronouns and adjectives and stuff were. I, I didn't get that to save my life. It was right up there with math. I understood basic math, just like I understood basic English. But when we got to a higher concept of it, it just, my head turned to soup, and it's still like that to this day. Oh, uh, so that was embarrassing. Um, I did befriend a girl, I guess you can say befriend. She lived around the corner from me. And you know, of course, my parents, my mom said it was okay because they were Christian. Uh, so that was one of the main reasons I hung out with her but honestly it would not have been my preference after learning about some of her mannerisms and tendencies when she simply low-key talked about people who were less than her I didn't like and some of the way she made me feel or treated me when she got around her other original white friends I didn't like the way she would make me feel discontinued or disowned or like, oh, I wasn't talking to that black girl, I was just helping her tie her shoe. It was more dismissive. So honestly, hanging around her 
was not by choice or natural design. My mom saw that I needed friends and I used to whine that I wanted friends, but I wasn't gonna put up with just anybody. So hanging around her for as long as I did on the outside looking in made it seem as though we were friends because people can only go by what they see. And what they saw was that we lived around the corner. I would go to her house and she would come to my house. We would study together. I didn't like studying together because it made me feel more stupid than I realized I already was. According to me at that time, especially when it came to English, I wasn't getting it and I would have rather had an adult teach me opposed to someone my, my age because it just was embarrassing because by that time I'm quite sure she told everybody in her world that I was dumb or probably slow and at that time I didn't know what slow meant. So hanging out with her, I did not want to. It was a forced friendship or relationship because every time I told my mom, I don't want to hang out with her anymore. She makes me feel like this. She makes me feel like that. When she gets around her other white friends, I don't feel basically valued. I didn't say all those big words, but I didn't feel important. She made me feel different as if she didn't want to be around me anymore. But it went on like that. But I even, I even have receipts. I didn't even know I had a journal. I have a journal from that time where I wrote that I don't want to talk to her. I don't want her to come over. I don't want to be her friend and I don't like her, point blank, period. And to this day, I still don't, but that's based on the energy she gave me growing up that I didn't like and I really wanted to get away from. My, my parents, uh, that was a forced friendship that I did not want and it went on way too long. I didn't like it at all. It just made me do more internalizing and made me realize that, unfortunately, based on her, white people, at least my age, were not nice and they really didn't like us and they saw us differently. Like we were trash or less than. And I felt like that because on the outside looking in, they had a better house, they had pets, they ate dinner together and didn't argue. Their mom and dad seemed happy. They weren't stuffy. She had nice clothes. She had long hair. She had her own bedroom with toys. And it was just like, her room really looked so girly and I wanted to be girly. And I had no idea that you could obtain this type of level of girliness. <laughs> but at my house, it was different. We were poor. I didn't have much and my clothes were raggedy. My mom was, at that time, she lost herself. She wasn't my mom that I used to know before she completely moved in with my dad. She changed. And it was total opposite. I didn't have much. So I really didn't want her coming to our house. It was just embarrassing. I just would have rather been alone. And to this day, I wish I never met her because meeting her and hanging around all her friends, I just saw life so differently and it's been, it's been embedded into my DNA now, along with all the other DNA crap from my ancestors that I had to deal with. You know, so that's more stuff I have to fight with and I am dealing with and I'm writing a book about but this this video here will be kind of an introductory to how and why my why my views have shaped into the way they have if I could go back into time I would I would not have wanted I would have wished my mom would have listened to me and had me stop hanging with her and her other friends too because through that forced friendship, all oh, it just crushed me. It crushed it crushed my view um, on how I saw the world completely. It made me realize that my family was terrible. And just because we lived in the suburbs didn't mean diddly squat because our relationship was piss poor. 
and we were literally piss poor and my parents were fake at least my dad was so he was leading everything so he projected to everyone that everything was fine we had everything we needed we're living in the suburbs I have a wife who gonna keep her mouth shut I have good kids who are smart I didn't know that I was a little bit slow you know things like that so I wish I never met her or at least I wish my mom didn't drag that friendship along because I just didn't like how she talked about people so I knew she was talking about me it was very condescending I learned what that word meant and that girl was very effing condescending and that's that.